Uh, when someone uh, dies, and in fact as Christians, we believe that someone has been promoted uh, to glory. And uh, one of uh, our core beliefs is that we believe in the immortality of the soul, in the resurrection of the body, in the general judgment at the end of for the world, in the eternal happiness of the righteous, and in the endless punishment of uh, the wicked. We commence with, uh, a, court, uh, with uh, a song, and uh, our first song is uh, song 180 in Tonga. This is such a beautiful song, I think that is well known by many people. Uh, to leave the world below, marching much upward with our band. Welcome to this special edition of Diaspora Insurance and uh, today I am glad to be joined by Mr. Martin Kapami who is a beneficiary of Diaspora Insurance's Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan and uh, Mr. Kapami is currently here in Lusaka, Zambia but uh, actually lives in the United Kingdom um, where you know, he had traveled from, you know, the UK all the way to Zambia uh, due to, you know, um, a bereavement that happened while in the UK. And uh, for most people, when they travel back to Africa or when they come back home, uh, you know, it's supposed to be an exciting moment. You're coming to see family. But uh, in his case, uh, he traveled back with three other family members. Uh, because of a bereavement uh, and uh, I would like to take this time to once again uh, sincerely you know pass my heartfelt condolences uh, to the Kapami family on the loss of uh, Mrs. Bessie Simbai Kapami who happened to be um, the wife the beloved wife uh, of Mr. Uh, Martin Kapami and uh, he's currently in Zambia and uh, when he arrived in Zambia he actually flew via Emirates together with uh, three other family members and uh, thanks to Diaspora Insurance for having facilitated uh, you know part of uh, uh, you know the the whole process to do with uh, the funeral and the travel etc etc but we'll be able to hear more from uh, Mr. Kapani himself and uh, sir welcome to this special program thank you very much Brian thank you very much you are welcome um, I just wanted to first say my sincere condolences, my heartfelt condolences. Thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you for accepting to, to share part of your story with regards to how everything uh, transpired. Maybe just for starters, I would just want to know, uh, I don't know if you remember the first time you joined Diaspora Insurance or, or what made you join in the first place? Wow, well, I joined Diaspora Insurance, I think should be close to about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I joined the Diaspora Insurance is what happened one, we, we lost one a, a female Zambian in UK and we had a church service at one of the churches and then there there was Diaspora um, you know, friends and other people, just were advertising, trying to enlighten the people of what they could do. Mm -hmm. So I took an interest to, it was like funny, it wasn't like I was serious, I just wanted to find <laughs> out what they, they, they could do. So I talked to one of the ladies, uh, I mean, it was a gentleman, sorry, 
I talked to him, I asked him, what are you doing here? What service are you providing? Yes. And why is it strictly for Zimbabweans? <laughs> Don't you think that we, we are also affected the whole of Africa? Yes. Yes. So the, the gentleman told me at the moment they are restricting to Zimbabweans. Okay. But I insisted that no, mm -hmm. we are the same. We, I mean, we are the same people, we yes. have the same problems and so on. So I said, please, can you go to your colleagues, mm -hmm. just tell them that also us Zambians would like to join. Wow. Yes, that's, that's, what it, well, that's what happened at the first time when I, I got in contact with the Diaspora Insurance. Wow, that's yeah. really great. That's yeah. a great story. Yeah. And uh, from what you remember, uh, were the premiums affordable? And uh, do you regret or do you actually love the decision that you made at that particular time following what happened? It's when uh, we started the... I mean, the premiums were quite low. It was something like, uh, is it 20 pounds uh, per okay. individual? Mm -hmm. And from 20 pounds per individual, um, we looked at the expenses. At first, I mean, people thought that 20 pounds was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at it, I reviewed, had a chat with my late wife. Yeah. I said, oh, look, there's this... Uh, uh, there is this insurance mm -hmm. which you pay 20 pounds mm -hmm. and then we compared that former uh, we had an insurance which we are paying close to 200 pounds each wow. i mean 200 pounds per family yes what a huge so, yeah, difference yeah so we said wow are, are we going to survive if we continue paying those big huge insurance premium mm -hmm. that's when we thought of 20 pounds said it, it's nothing but it is one one thing which if you can pay it on monthly or whatever it has it has got no much repercussion to your budget yeah. so that's why i was i took i thought it was reasonable at that yeah. particular time you see that, that's how it, it went on but at end it's still more even 27 mm -hmm. is still more i can say it's more affordable yeah. looking at the actual cost yeah. which is involved Okay, so I just heard you mentioning that uh, you had a discussion with uh, with your beloved late wife. Yes. Uh, so this means that you were both covered. We were both covered because even the time when we went through that funeral, we were mm -hmm. we were two of us. Yes. Okay. So we were both covered. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So, but given the travel restrictions uh, in this, you know, COVID era from about March 2020 till now, there've been a lot of uh, travel restrictions. Why didn't you just, you know, decide to bury in the UK? Why did you have to bring uh, the body to Zambia? Is it because you were honoring her wishes or you just wanted to... No, I was honoring her wishes, actually. It's unfortunate, this COVID issue, we, when we came, perhaps we were not supposed to travel in December. Okay. But we, unfortunately, we traveled, we wanted to... I mean, we were growing up. I mean, yeah. you can see my age. Mm -hmm. So we thought we should start in preparing for our retirement. Right. So we came here, we started doing all our projects with intention that no, one day or the other, mm -hmm. we are now old, we should come to, I mean, should come back to, to Zambia. Yeah. Uh, did you face any challenges with regards to repatriation and family travel, seeing that you traveled with three other people coming to Zambia? Uh, did you have to get vaccinated first before traveling or maybe you only needed to have a negative uh, COVID test? Um, yes, we needed to have uh, mid-double uh, vaccination, the first and second. So all members of the, of the crew needed to have a, a double jabs. We thought it would also be safer when we come, we come here. So. But the costs, if we are talking of the cost, was very high because also during that time is when, after we got the second job, yeah. uh, the government, you know, they've been changing rules and so on. They came up with the new regulation whereby if you travel into a red zone country, mm -hmm. you have to pay 1750 each wow. to stay in a hotel. Mm. So looking at that cost alone, I think it covers it. That's a very, very yeah. high cost. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, so I, I understand that you did you travel via Emirates initially as you were coming to Zambia? 
from the UK? Yes, we okay. use the, we use the Emirates. Unfortunately, the Emirates have cancelled all flights from from yes. Zambia going back. I yes. was actually just so about to ask you to <laughs> say now with these cancellations and the ban on entry and the, the flights into Dubai, uh, how are you now going to travel back to the UK? What we are going to do, actually, what what, what we have done is we have bought new tickets now. Okay. So it means the highway cost has gone up. We are mm -hmm. using another app and we are using Ethiopian Airlines. Okay. Yes, unfortunately, Ethiopia, uh, or can I say fortunate Ethiopia uh, Airlines, they are still flying. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything can happen. Yeah. Yes. So, and we are, not sure, we are not sure if we are going to be refunded. Uh, by Emirates. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So repatriation plus uh, traveling with all these family members, that must be costly. Uh, did Diaspora Insurance play any role in making it lighter for you? Yes. You see, as I said, mm -hmm. uh, Diaspora played a very important role because we immediately passed on. Okay. Uh, I got in touch, I think, after uh, two days. Okay. The, the fourth day, mm -hmm. they had transferred the money to wow. my account. It was so prompt. Yes. Wow. Actually, they did the, everything was done by them. I just called them and they said, they looked that I was up to date with my premium. Mm -hmm. And that was the all. They wanted only to find out with, whether I was up to date with my premium, wow. which yeah. I was up to date. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing which was running. They did all, everything. Yeah. They filled every, everything. It was done by them. Mm -hmm. So what I saw was, I mean, they called me, said, can you please check your account? Yeah. And if they check if there's money in the account. And when I checked in the account, there was money. Wow. And I told my family that we have received money yeah. for, we have received the money for repatriation and for everything which we wow. need for, for m my late. Wow, that's yes. amazing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what's known as a cash-based funeral policy. That's part of the diaspora funeral cash plan. And allow me to just read something out uh, in line with what he's just from saying. The essence of a cash-based funeral policy is to guarantee bereaved family uh, immediate financial intervention and give families flexibility to cover expenses, be it burial abroad, repatriation, or cremation. Uh, so my next question to you now is, um, did receiving a lump sum, um, you know, which was paid within 24 hours, like you said, uh, of providing proof of death. Did it help with easing your burden? Yeah, yes, of, of course. I mean, we knew now that at least we are set. Mm. So now what we wanted is, now we looked at other costs, but we knew that at, at least she was going to be repatriated. Yes. There was enough money to repatriate her, you see. Mm. That was the most important thing. The other people, the other, the, in terms of the, um, in, in terms of the, parties traveling to um, a company or traveling to Africa, yeah. that was, we knew that that was going to come later and it was going to be easier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't going to be as difficult as it was going to be if it, we didn't have that cash, mm -hmm. uh, cash fund coming from diaspora insurance. Wow. Yeah. So of all insurance companies, why diaspora? <laughs> you see, diaspora insurance company, I mean, it's, it's the way it was uh, created, you know, with its intention mm -hmm. and its aim. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks at our problems. Mm -hmm. You see, us in diaspora, we do have also our own more problems mm -hmm. than what, whatever we think of. I mean, yeah, I know... If people back people, home don't understand because they believe that there is a money tree out there where you just uh, pick money. <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> that has been the perception. Actually, yes. we have got more problem because mm. we do, what we do is we do send money out to try to assist our relatives back, back home. home. Mm. But we sometimes we forget that we will be, one day we need that money to, to solve our own problems. Mm. Especially things like when we have a funeral, Sunday we have a funeral. You know, we don't plan for funeral, most of us in, Af in you know, in our tradition as, as Zambians or Africans. Yeah. Because if you do that, they will say, is he a witch or a wizard or whatever, you know, all those, all those is he wishing somebody to die? Mm. Yes. But these things are, are, are real, that we do need 
such kind of a plan if they will assist us. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about guaranteed acceptance, no medicals at all on application, immediate cash payout on proof of death, no more bereaving and begging, worldwide protection without borders, uniquely flexible burial abroad, border repatriation or cremation, treating customers fairly, and excellent customer support, as you have heard from his testimonial. I know that there are lots of people in the diaspora who actually don't have uh, you know, funeral insurance cover for one reason or, or the other. Uh, do you have any advice to such people? Because we understand that even here in Zambia, uh, a lot of people when there's a funeral, they begin asking for contributions from different people and sometimes you know, it, can, it can delay the process. Uh, I don't know if you have any advice based on your experience with diaspora insurance. You know, I mean, in terms of contributions, you know, we have good friends, we have what sometimes, in, you know, there are a lot of other things past which we, we, I mean, people come to contribute, we ask sometimes for people to come in to help us, I mean, it's, uh, all these type of things, mm -hmm. especially during this time when rules have changed, yeah. yeah, we have to ask for friends, whatever, you know, it's our custom to contribute on, you know, when you've got your friends, relatives and so on to to contribute, mm -hmm. but uh, when when it comes to one important cardinal thing, especially abroad, I would uh, urge, um, especially all Zambians or all Africans, to to ensure that they have this type of cash plan, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because cash you can be insured yes by other insurance, but they are not going to release the cash when you need it that particular time especially the time when in need, especially of repatriating and so on. Mm -hmm. Because if you were going to ask for your insurance, perhaps they were going to take one year, six months, whatever, yeah. to, to check all those frauds and all those type mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. But when you have a cash plan like this one, mm -hmm. I would urge everyone to be a member of, yeah. of this plan. Mm -hmm. And those people, other colleagues or friends, um, most of them I know mm -hmm. what we get is not enough. So this is a very reasonable, mm -hmm. cheap way of paying an insurance mm -hmm. and which you are assured of getting cash. Mm -hmm. So if you spend 30 pounds a month, mm -hmm. it will go a long way when you are in trouble. Yeah. So I would urge everyone to think to join mm -hmm. Desperate Insurance yeah. because they will be given at least a lump sum which will go a long way. Wow. Or whatever comes in is a plus. It's, yeah. You know, you want a plus, then it's a, you know, mm -hmm. it makes things easier when you are in Africa. Now you can move in other things. Even after after the funeral, you still have a bit of money to go to to go around with. Right. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that sums it all. That sums it up. Thank you so so much, Mr. Kapami, for according us this time to be able to talk to you even in these trying times and uh, we just want to appreciate you and say thank you so much for joining us and once again my sincere condolences thank you so much thank you thank you brian it has been a pleasure We want to honor you at this moment of God. We want to thank you for all things that you have, you have done to us, Almighty God. Father, at this moment, uh, Father, as we leave this place, 
Father, we pray that God, you shall send the angels, oh Father, to watch over this grave in the name of Jesus. Father Jehovah, as we move from here, may you give the traveling message to each one of us. Funeral cover for less than a cup of coffee. Peace of mind is not as expensive as you may think. For just one day, you can forego your cup of coffee for your monthly Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan cover. To find out how much premium you would pay, get a quote today. Visit www.diasporainsurance.com forward slash get quote. WhatsApp plus 44770-3838304 UK and International. WhatsApp plus 27659-070-419 South Africa and rest of Africa. Funeral cover for less than a cup of coffee.